Hello, in this video we're going to derive the derivatives of a normal density and we actually have some other useful identities. Um, I started using this trick a few times in other videos and I kept saying, you know, there's a lot of videos out there or you can do this on your own and, and so now when I use them in videos I can refer to this video. And that's one of the main reasons I'm doing it. And plus, these I think these derivations are good to have in your mathematical toolbox anyway. So if we let x be a normal distribution, mean, mu, variance, sigma squared, and the density can be written like this, and we want to take the derivative of f. Now, this is a constant, so it comes out front, and we're taking the derivative of the exponential. So we get it back, and then you take the derivative of the exponent. And this, you know, the, it's two times, well, this is a constant, so it comes out front, and then it's two times, you know, then subtract one, take the derivative of x, it's one, so you get this. And so um, this identity here is used a lot when you're doing integration, or you know stuff like that in the normal density so the first derivative is equal to minus x minus mu over sigma squared times the original density back okay and and we're actually going to use this my next video i'm going to do are driving the moments of a normal distribution you know generically i think we'll do the first four moments we'll use this over and over so now if x were a standard normal then mu is zero and the variance is one so it just becomes this the derivative of a standard normal density is minus x times the density itself now the second derivative is this so assume we have a standard normal and we want to take the second derivative of our normal density well the derivative of the first derivative, which we got up here, then, then there's two x's. So we'll do this using the product rule. So it's the derivative of this first term times the second, which is this. Then it's the, the, this, this term times the derivative of the density, which, which we derived up here, which is this. Now this simplifies. You can factor out the density and then combine and we get this so the second derivative of a, of a normal density can be written in this form now if x were a standard normal density then mu is zero and the variances are one and it can be written like this it's just x squared minus one times the the standard normal density okay now here, in, uh, in a lot of these videos, we'll do integration by parts of a normal density. And we have to evaluate, you know, something that looks like this. X times e to the x squared. And then, and then we say, well, x goes to infinity. But then when you take this, you know, it's, since it's raised to minus, you take it down. So we get an infinity over infinity situation. But... I always say that this grows to infinity faster than this when it's a fraction. So the whole thing goes to zero. Or you can think of it that this goes to zero if you leave it in the numerator and let x go to infinity. This goes to zero, but that goes to infinity. Well, this goes to zero so much faster than that goes to infinity that the whole thing goes to zero. And so we're going to use Lobotol's rule to prove that. And then in later videos, I can always refer back to this one. So we have the fraction, um, infinity over infinity, take the derivatives, you get you know, 1 over 2x e to the x squared, and then let x go to infinity. Well, this goes to infinity, you know, so the whole thing goes to 0. And it's also true if we have x squared times this sort of normal density. And, and it's the same way. So we take that down to put it in a fraction. Take Lobotol's, you know, the derivative of each. So then the x cancel. And then let x go to infinity. And this goes to zero. 
um, the same when it's x cubed. So set it up in the fraction, infinity over infinity. Let's use Lobotol's rule. And you know what's interesting about Lobotol's rule? You can't just blanketly apply it. Um, Lobotol says that if you take the derivative of the numerator and denominator and then find the limit, if it exists, then that equals the original. So the key word is if it exists. Um, so here we take the derivative and we get this, and then um, we cancel and we get this. Now the constant can come out front, and we take the limit of this. But that's what we showed here, which is zero. So this is zero. Zero. Anyway, so that's all I have for today. I made the video so I can always point back to it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.